Hi there, viewers, and welcome to the Repair It, Don't Wreck It channel. Today we're working on a classic Craftsman 4 horsepower, 19 inch wide auger model. The plan for today is to replace the starter switch. When you press the button, there is no clicking and virtually no resistance. I'm sure that it is broken inside and needs to be replaced as it doesn't start when depressed. I've never replaced one of these switches. Let's start taking it apart and figure it out as we go along. The first thing is remove the two screws that hold the switch on top of the snow blower. With the switch removed from the blower, I'm going to try and take the two sections apart. I would think it would be fairly tight or there may be some glue in there to keep water or moisture out. No luck. I'm going to remove the complete starter and switch. It will be easier to have a closer look at it on the bench. There are three bolts that hold the starter on. The bolt that I'm removing connects a bracket to secure the bottom of the fuel tank and the starter. I've already removed the two bolts on the left side of the starter. The starter and control switch are sold as one. That's what prompted me to try the repair as I didn't think there's anything wrong with the starter and the wiring looked in great condition. After prying for a while with the screwdriver, I kind of came to this point in the project. It's a little barbaric, but I'm going to use a hacksaw to cut off some of the plastic that is sticking where I want to take it apart. I'm going to take my time. Hopefully I won't cut through anything and damage something inside. I didn't do much editing here because I felt it was important to see the process that I had used. When I looked at the video, I probably should have used something wider than the small screwdriver I was using. It would have been better to use a putty knife or say a one inch wood chisel to pry it apart. Take your time and use the screwdriver to pry around all around the outside in small increments. Now that it is apart, you can see that there's a bunch of pins that align the two halves together. Inside is not that complicated. There's a switch in the middle with spade connectors at each end. Grommets protect the wires that attach the plastic halves that keep the water and moisture out. Before I order a new switch, I need to check the starter motor to make sure it works. Here you can see I hot wired it, but in retrospect, what I should have done was just use the short extension cord, which would have been faster, easier, and safer. After bumping the starter four or five times, I am confident that the starter is in good shape and worth fixing. Here is the original switch that is defective with all the information on it. Here is the switch that I ordered from Amazon. Same technical information, not the same brand. Before I put everything back together, I wanted to check the rubber dome that protects the switch. It looks in good shape and I'm going to reuse it. The switch was around $10. Now that I have the new switch, I will reinstall the starter first, then I'll do the switch next. Installation of the starter is reversal of the removal. The only thing that I would have done differently was to put some blue Loctite on the three bolts. These machines vibrate like crazy. Install all three bolts loosely so nothing gets cross-threaded. Once you're happy, go around and snug everything up. It's a little finicky, but just take your time. It'll get done. Now to the switch replacement. Simply attach the spade connectors at each end. It doesn't matter the orientation. The enclosure is a little tight, so you may have to twist the wires a little bit to get everything back into place. The only thing that holds that switch in place is the white button fits into the rubber dome. So you need to make sure everything is nice and snug and tight and fully seated. That's why I'm playing around with it so much because I want to make sure that I can get the cover on.
Now that everything is seated, double check the switch several times to make sure that it is clicking and returning. I think we've got it. The next step is to waterproof the enclosure. Here I'm doing a temporary fit to make sure the pins will slip in before I silicone this puppy up. Before you install the switch, now would be a good time to take the serial number information off the top of the snowblower before you cover it. Just a small film of silicone will work. You don't need to overdo it. Now you can put the cover on. It's a little tricky, but align all those pins up. And once you get it started, start pressing it down and try to push it evenly all around the edges. I'm going to use the original screws that came with the starter button. They are in pretty good shape. However, if your screws are rusty or not biting when you tighten up, try new screws. And if that doesn't work, I would just simply move the starter button over a half inch or so and re-drill holes in top of the sheet metal. Of course, you need to be careful because you're on top of the cylinder and you don't want to do any damage. The moment of truth. Power to the starter, key on, full choke, full throttle. Beautiful. This repair was not that hard. Since it didn't work, there's nothing to lose. Taking it apart and cutting it with a hacksaw may have been risky, but at the end of the day, it did work out, and the switch was really quite inexpensive, around $10. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, repair it. Don't wreck it. Thanks for watching.